as we've seen, floats are values that have decimals, right? There's a decimal point explicitly in the float. So that could be that could be 1.0, could be 0, 0.0, could be 273.985, any of these values. These are all floats. So how do you change a value to a float? We saw this in the last video. Uh, we could take some int, and let's say that's 289. If we want to uh, go ahead and make that into a float, we can do this float of some int, and what we're going to see is 289.0. Pretty straightforward. Uh, similarly to the string casting, well, let's see. 276.3, can we cast this to a float? It turns out we can. Now, that's pretty smart, right? Uh, Python knows that this can be a float. Now, if we say 276.3 cats, which sounds like a grisly event, well, we can't turn 276.3 cats into a float. So here's a strange facet of floats. This is related to how these numbers are stored in binary memory. I'm going to go ahead and say 2.3333333, and I'm going to set this as float1. And for float2, I'm going to have a number that's very close. And I need to name that float2. If I compare float1 to float2, we're going to go ahead and assume that's going to be false, right? We would assume it would be false. Turns out it's true. Now that's kind of strange. This sort of uh, float comparison can be problematic in a lot of languages, including Python. In this case, we're seeing maybe we want float1 and float2 to be different numbers, but we're hitting a sort of precision underflow problem. Now, if you want to set a threshold for comparison, you know, we might do something like this. Let's subtract float2 from float1, see what that gets us. Well, it gets a 0, 0.0. So in this case, we're going to consider float1 and float2 to be equal. Now, what if we look at this. So two point a number of threes, two point a number of threes, and then a four. Are these going to be equal? They're not equal. So if we want to consider equality to a certain number of decimal points, we need to explicitly make an equals function for floats, or we need to perform some kind of operation that will give us a threshold to work with. So we could say something like, if float1 minus float2 is greater than some value, let's say 0 0.0001. Now, we don't know which of these is bigger necessarily, so I'm going to put an absolute value around this. ABS is absolute value. In this case, I might say that this would be false, right? So if float 1 minus float 2 absolute value is greater than this threshold, I'm going to print false. Now it turns out it's not. So I'm going to print true. And if I increase this threshold, or sorry, decrease this threshold, at some point, maybe it's there. Yeah. I think I could back that off another one and still be false. 
Oh, no, that was the right number. Okay. So as you can see, depending on the precision that you need for your calculation, two floats, you may want to consider them equal when they are not actually stored in memory as being equal, as is the case here. And you also want to watch out for situations where, you know, these two numbers, for all intents and purposes, from Python's point of view, are equal numbers.